Last year, I produced a video with the Ford Super Duty F-Series. We compared the engine specifications with the 6.7 liter turbo diesel power stroke and the 7.3 liter gas Godzilla engine. Now, I took a lot of the feedback that you guys commented on, and we're gonna be doing something similar today with the new 2021 F-150. We have four engines here. There are six engines available for the F-150 in 2021, and we're gonna be going over all the specifications and information you need to know if you're in the market for a new half-ton pickup truck. And I wouldn't be able to do this today if it weren't for my friends here at Yerjo Ford in Actonville, Quebec. They have most of the vehicles here in stock. One of them is our press vehicle, but they've allowed me to come out and talk about the wide range of Ford F-150 engines today so that you can be better informed. If you want to know more about Yerjo Ford, you can visit their website. The link is in the description below, and it's where I take my own Ford for service. So whether you're buying new, used, or service, they've got you covered. Now we're gonna be going over each one of the engines, telling you how you can get it configured in your vehicle and everything you need to know about it. So let's start off with the first base model. Yes, the entry level Ford F-150 engine. It's the 3.3 liter Cyclone V6 engine. Now we don't have it here today to show you, but it is available only on the XL and XLT trims. You can't get it on any of the Lariats that we have here, but this XLT would be a contender for it. Produces 290 horsepower, 265 pound-feet of torque, pretty low numbers overall. It is the least powerful when it comes to pretty much anything with the Ford F-150s. It uses the same 10-speed automatic transmission that we'll find on almost all of the new trucks. It is a naturally aspirated engine along with twin independent variable cam timing and port and direct fuel injection. Now all the vehicles we're comparing are based on a Super Crew with the five and a half foot bed and four by four. Keep in mind that you can configure these vehicles in a multitude of ways, but we're just trying to even everything out so that you get a better idea of what they are on an average scale because the max payload or towing might be different, but it's usually in a configuration that people aren't buying. For the most part, we find that the Super Crews are the most popular with the shorter bed if you're looking at a vehicle like this. Base curb weight for that would be 4,705 pounds. The maximum payload for it would be 1,765 pounds with a maximum Maximum towing capacity of 8,200 pounds. That's using the 3.73 rear differential. Now again, that price is included on the XL and XLTs. The next engine up is going to cost you $900 in Canada and interestingly $1,195 in the US. That would be this 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 engine. Produces 325 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque, and again uses that same 10-speed automatic transmission. Now this is a twin turbo V6, and again we're configuring them all the same. So Super Crew, five and a half foot bed with 4x4. Base curb weight for this would be 4,838 pounds, a little bit more than the 3.3 V6, and that makes sense. Maximum payload with a package would be 1,965 pounds. The regular payload for this would be 1,760. If you went with the maximum towing package, you could get up to 10,100 pounds, but the regular towing would be 8,100 pounds. So again, a little bit less than what we saw on the 3.3 liter V6. The price again is included if you're going with the Lariat trim. It's an upgrade if you're going with the XL or XLT. Now we drove this engine a little while ago. Our fuel economy testing numbers for the entire week that we had it was 12.7 liters per 100 kilometers or 18.5 US miles per gallon. And again, that's using the 3.73 diff. So we're evening everything out just to make it a little bit easier when comparing it. The next engine up our list is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 engine. This actually gets a power boost from the previous generation. It now produces 400 horsepower, 500 pound-feet of torque. It uses that same 10-speed automatic transmission. Now this is a twin turbo engine, and it's not the high output version that we saw, again, with the previous generation, if you went with either the Raptor or Limited trims. As of filming this, Ford does not offer the high output EcoBoost engine anymore. Even on the Raptor and Limited, you're either getting this EcoBoost or the Power Boost, which we'll be talking about in a couple minutes. So keep that in mind. The base curb weight for this would be 4,948 pounds. Maximum payload would be 2,100 pounds, which is pretty good. And the max towing with the 3.55 rear diff, so different diff on this, would be 12,300 pounds. The price for this engine is a little bit more, $2,350 Canadian or $1,400 in the US if you're going up from that 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. 
Now, like with the previous one, we have driven this engine before during the week that we had it. We completed 14.7 liters per 100 kilometers on average. That's 16 US miles per gallon. Decent numbers overall, and this is going to be probably the most popular engine choice for people who are looking for the best of everything. Best fuel economy, best performance, and those towing and hauling numbers are very good as well. You know the old saying of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? That's what this is. This is the 5 liter Coyote V8 engine. It has been around forever and it's because it works. Produces 400 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque, and again uses that same 10 speed automatic transmission. It's a naturally aspirated V8, meaning no forced induction, no turbos, anything like that. It could have some potential if you wanted to upgrade it if you wanted to. Base curb weight for this would be 4,912 pounds. Maximum payload, the best that you can get at this configuration, 2,240 pounds, with a maximum tow rating of 12,300 pounds. Again, that number keeps coming up. Quite a bit of towing capacity for any of these half-ton pickup trucks. Now, the price for this motor is $2,650 Canadian, only $800 in the US. Very interesting, it's actually cheaper to go with this than it is to go with the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. So if you're in the US, this is probably gonna be your choice if you're looking for something that is cost effective and has good power numbers. And again, that is using the 3.73 diff at the rear end. So everything about this engine, pretty straightforward. We've seen it forever. We haven't driven this one, unfortunately, so we don't have any fuel economy numbers for you, but the V8s tend to be a little bit more thirsty than the V6 turbos. Now, before we move on to the new engine for 2021, I want to talk about the 3 liter Power Stroke Turbo Diesel V6. That engine produces 250 horsepower, 440 pound feet of torque, and again uses that 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, the base curb weight for that would be 5,243 pounds. Max payload would be 1,805 pounds, where you see with the diesels, payloads are lower because the engines themselves are heavier. Max towing with the towing package would be 12,300 pounds, with the regular tow rating on it would be 11,100 pounds. Interesting that the diesel doesn't have the best towing numbers, which is what we usually find when we go with the Super Duties. Now, it is an expensive engine. You're looking at $7,350 Canadian to go up to it, $3,800 in the US. We have driven it. We did 10.4 liters per 100 kilometers or 22.6 US miles per gallon during our time with it. And that uses the 3.55 rear diff. Now it's interesting, I don't have it here. There's only two of them coming to Yerjo Ford and that is the end of production for the Power Stroke V6, at least as far as we can tell. It seems that Ford is discontinuing it, making it very difficult to buy it on this generation. So we are doing it, we are talking about it because this isn't necessarily going to be viewed only today. Maybe down the road you're looking at these used and you're curious to know what the differences were for the 2021 models. So the Power Stroke was available but such a limited production on it. And it did have quite a bit going for it. I did like it, we talked about it when we featured it in the Platinum a couple years ago, but it's pretty much dead after this year. And that finally brings us to the top end when it comes to the new Ford F-150. This is the unique selling feature, the thing that nobody else has on the market as of this point. This is the 3.5 liter Power Boost full hybrid V6. Produces 430 horsepower, which is the most for the F-150 at this time. 570 pound-feet of torque, again, the most you can get out of a F-150. It has a 10-speed modular hybrid transmission, so slightly different transmission than the ones that we saw in every other engine available. And it is a twin turbo engine like the 3.5 liter and the 2.7. Now the base curb weight for this is the most, unfortunately, 5,517 pounds. It is heavy with a maximum payload of 1,830. So despite it being the heaviest, the payload is still pretty decent. Now the maximum conventional tow on this is 12,400 pounds. That is the most by 100 pounds when it comes to this configuration and that is by going with the max towing package on this. Pricing for it a little bit pricey as well, $4,850 Canadian, $3,300 in the US. Now, if you think back, we have featured the Ford Explorer Hybrid, and I talked about how it compared, at least to the previous generation, and how the fuel economy numbers would work. It would take a while for you to pay back the difference in price. This one's a little bit more affordable, and we found that the fuel economy has been pretty good with this. We have done 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers, or 24.8 US miles per gallon. This is the best for fuel economy out of all the F-150s that we've driven, including the diesel. So if you're looking for the best 
best fuel economy, the best power numbers, the best towing numbers, this is definitely the one to go with. And I see a lot of them on the road. The Power Boost offers a unique experience to buyers, not only because it is the first full-size pickup truck that has a hybrid engine in it, but because of the Pro Power on board that allows you to use other items from either the bed or the cab by using the battery power on the vehicle itself. Now, we will be talking about that more when we do the full episode on this 2021 Ford F-150 with the Power Boost engine. But suffice it to say, if you are looking to buy a truck because you need it for whether it's construction work, your own personal work, going camping, things like that, this will be the engine for you because it essentially works as its own generator. So there's a lot to like about this engine. And again, one of the reasons why I think it's so popular. I wasn't gonna leave you hanging. I know you wanted to see some of these trucks on the road. We're actually just behind the wheel of our Power Boost right now because all the other trucks that I featured, including all the other F-150s that Yerjo Ford has in stock, they're all sold. They're all accounted for, ready to go on to new owners. Because of the pandemic, because of microchip shortages, there are just not enough trucks available at dealerships right now. That's why the prices for used ones have gone up so much. So as much as I would have liked to have taken them out on the road to talk about them, they're all accounted for, and pretty much all of them were still wrapped up with the interior protection stuff. But that doesn't matter because we've driven most of them. We know how they all kind of perform. And ultimately, this is the one that's gonna be the most important. This is the different engine for this model year. So if you're looking for something unique, something different, something new, this is gonna be the one to go with. Now, how do the other ones compare first? I do mention that the 3.5 liter engine is probably gonna be the most popular choice for people because it gives you a pretty good mix of you know, performance, towing, payload, and the price isn't too bad overall. I think that's gonna be the one that most people will choose if they're looking for a typical truck. We've liked the performance on it, whether it's the regular output or the high output version, and that gets a bump this year, makes it even better. It's got decent sound, good fuel economy and everything, performs very well with the 10-speed transmission, works without any issues. It's a good choice to go with. Now we drove the 2.7 liter V6 a while ago. Now one thing I found with it is the power was a little low on it. I did feel, yeah, you know, it could have had a little bit more boost, a little bit more power would have been nice, but overall it gets the job done. I guess it depends on what you're going for out of a truck. You know, if you're going for just something to get through, get a buy and have decent fuel economy numbers, then that might be the way to go. And again, depending on which trim you go with, it's not gonna be overly expensive. In the States though, I don't know why it's so expensive, but maybe because it's more fuel efficient, it's more expensive. I don't understand why, but that was a very strange thing to find. But anyway, that is that. And then when it comes to the Power Stroke, I'm personally disappointed that they are not going to be offering it anymore. Mostly, I think, because of emissions. It's just hard to get those diesel engines to pass emission standards. But also, you know, you take a look at the numbers compared to what we just talked about they aren't overly good anymore you know they were good for the previous generation but now that you've got this it makes a big difference which brings us to the power boost that's why i'm so excited to be driving this one i think this is going to be a very popular option for a lot of people i've seen a lot of them on the road since they were first launched i don't know exactly how many people are buying them compared to the non power boost version but there is so much good with this okay price is a little higher as we mentioned and it will take you a long time to get that cost back by using less fuel but the idea is you're sort of helping the environment you're getting a very solid work truck that has a lot of capabilities and the potential with the pro power on board is going to be the thing that makes or breaks it for a lot of people because what you might not know is pro power is available on some of the other engines but the 7.2 kilowatt version that we have here is only available on the power boost so if you want to have the most that's what you get the 2.4 kilowatt version is the standard on the power boost but we've got this one upgraded and then the 2 kilowatt version is available on certain engines so take a look at your configuration see if it's something that you want but i think that's going to be a huge selling factor when we look at these pickup trucks yes a 
huge majority of them are sold to returning customers, people who will only buy one brand of truck. But it's the Conquest customers that are gonna be looking at some of these features and, and deciding, wow, you know, this is the standout feature when it comes to the Ford F-150, on top of the fact that the interior here is so good. But I don't wanna to spend too much time on this because the idea really is just to talk about the engines. So if you are curious to know more about this generation F-150, we are doing a full episode of Test Drive Spotlight on this Lariat that we have here. So you can check out the video after. We're gonna be publishing it a little bit after if you're watching this brand new, but just take a look at our channel for more information. Well, there you have it, folks. That is the full lineup of the new Ford F-150 engine choices. There have been some changes. There's been a new addition with the power boost, the deletion of the power stroke, or at least for the most part, and the lack of the high output 3.5 liter V6. Now, there is a Ford Raptor R coming out later this year. We've heard rumors about it, but until it comes out, we don't know for sure how much power it will be producing, but that will be yet another engine available for this vehicle. I would again like to thank Yerjo Ford here in Actonville for letting me feature these engines and to go over all the specifications with you. Without their help, we would not be able to do this, or at least it would not have been as interesting as I'd just be standing in front of nothing. So we have all these vehicles here thanks to them. If you have any questions about this or anything that we've discussed here on Test Drive when it comes to the Ford F-150 engines, please leave a comment below. I do try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Give a thumbs up to the video if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care.